You've got this electronic imprisonment. You may actually go through the federal pen. You've been disbarred and financially eaten alive. But frankly, you seem like a very um, happy guy. <laughs> <laughs> Explain that to me. <laughs> well, I'm happy in the sense that I'm blessed to have so much support, friends, family, love, and I'm at peace with my work. You know, some people look at me and they say, wow, that must be a really bad life, being on house arrest. You know, I, and I don't like it, but I prefer to look at me and say, wow, like, we must have done something really dangerous to the fossil fuel industry for, this to, for them to do this to me. And I take pride in that. I derive satisfaction from that. And that combined with knowing the truth and knowing where I think this is heading, ultimately, I'm at peace. And, you know, if I go to prison tomorrow, I'm going to go into prison a free man. And while I'm in prison, I'm going to be a free man, meaning... I'm going to be at peace with myself, and I'm going to have freedom in my head, and I'm going to be able to derive satisfaction from our accomplishments. And ultimately, I'll get out and continue the work. And there's a lot to look forward to, because there's a lot of work to do in the human rights world and in the climate justice world. So, you know, I feel okay. You know, I feel okay. You know, there's a friend of mine, a uh, Harvard Law School classmate who's a human rights lawyer, and she told me a few weeks ago, she said, Stephen, they hate that you smile. Until you stop smiling, they're going to keep attacking you. And I can't help but keep smiling because I'm, I'm honestly in awe of what the indigenous peoples of Ecuador and the farmer communities who brought this case have accomplished. I can't believe it. When I started in 1993, I mean, I had no idea it would, it would grow into this. I mean, it was just a simple case. You know, and they have thrown so much at those people. I mean, I'm suffering here, but I mean, the people who get poisoned every day and can't afford bottled water, have no faucets, and they, you know, their water sources are all contaminated, and many have died. I mean, that's a much higher level of suffering than what I'm enduring. And I'm amazed at their tenacity, their determination, their cohesion, the, the level of community organizing at the grassroots level, the leadership. I mean... I've learned so much. I mean, I went down to Ecuador as a kind of a young Harvard law grad thinking I could teach those people how to fight back. And I ended up learning actually more lessons, lessons from them about how to live life and about how to understand wisdom than they ever learned from me. I mean, yeah, I, I know a little bit more about the law. They know a lot more about life and about what drives the natural world and about how we need to function to survive as a species and as a planet, you know. So it's been an extraordinarily enriching personal experience to go through this. And I'm blessed, and that's why I'm happy. How fucking crazy is that? When <laughs> you think about it. You know what I mean? That's, I mean, just... <laughs> you need to stop smiling. Yeah, okay, I get it.